I'm Black Bright and I hope you're enjoying your bank holiday weekend. I hope you haven't gone out and spent all your money because you're probably going to need it very soon. But on the subject, oh, first of all, I am Black Bright broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. First time you're passing through, you're welcome to put the thumbs up, the thumbs down, and by all means, subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And share. If you don't want to subscribe, share. You're not obliged to do anything you don't want to do. And also interact with my subscribers. Anyway, we're talking about money today. Um, there are those who have been quite proud of themselves over the last few years, who have been saving a few shekels and have felt quite good that they've kind of had a little um, nest egg. You know, there is this rule that you should have at least six months salary just in case of an emergency, just in case something goes wrong. And some people have done that. Some people have been saving vigilantly, whether it's saving for deposit for a house, whether it's saving for a rainy day, whether it's saving for a car, whether it's saving for a holiday. People have been scrimping and saving and doing without. So when we're now in this situation where the coronavirus has stopped people from working, where it looks like all the business are shutting down, when it looks like there may be an economic collapse, and where it looks like maybe the banks might shut down and all the financial institutions, you're going to be thinking, what's going to happen to my money? Should I take it out? Should I leave it in? Should I? We haven't got the privilege of putting it in some offshore bank or, you know, some tax haven. So it's, you know, for a lot of people, they're in a dilemma. So this morning I was doing some filing and I came across the financial services compensation scheme. So I thought it put my mind at rest. So I thought I'd read it out to you to put your mind at rest. Because, yes, we hear that we are um, secure up to 85000 but we don't know how we're going to get it. We don't know what we've got to do to get it. And all of those kind of questions could go on in a lot of people's minds. So I'm here just to clarify a little bit. I'm going to try and keep this video short and sweet and to the point. And, yes, yeah, so... If the firm, bank, the firm like the bank, the building society or credit union failed after the 1st of January or you hold money with any other UK authorised financial institution, the financial services compensation scheme will automatically compensate you up to £85,000 per eligible person. Per bank building society or credit union. It does say per bank, but I understood when I read something somewhere else. It said if you've got 80,000 in one um, organ, one financial institution and then five and then 10,000 in another, you only get 85,000. So you lose 5,000. But this is saying per bank, building society or credit union, which implies that if you've got 100,000 in one bank, 100,000 in another bank, and 100,000 in another bank, they're going to compensate you 85,000 from one bank, 85,000 from another bank, 85,000 from a third bank. So you need to clarify that because both sources were authentic, but both of them said something different. So you need to check that out, whether it's an overall 85,000, regardless of how many institutions you bank with, or whether it is per institution that you bank with, because that is important. Um, what else? Or 170,000 for a couple. They also protect certain qualifying temporary high balances. So now, supposing um, you think to yourself, oh, well, if they're only going to... Um, compensate me for 85,000. What about that inheritance I just got from so-and-so? What about um, the, the compensation I got for an accident? What about 
um, the proceeds of sale I got from a house. Don't worry, they insure you against temporary, what do they call them? Temporary high balances in your bank account. So um, the temporary high balances in your bank account includes its real estate transactions, benefits payable under insurance policy, personal injury payment, and that's an unlimited amount that goes beyond the 85,000, disability or incapacity payments, state benefits. Now, I don't understand how you'd get a disability or incapacity payment in state benefits valued to 85,000. If somebody knows, please put it in the description below because I, I, I can't work that one out. Okay, claim for compensation for wrongful conviction, claims for compensation for unfair dismissal, redundancy payments, marriage or civil partnership payments, divorce or dissolution of a civil partnership, the money from there, benefit payments on retirement, benefit payments on death, a claim for compensation in respect of a person's death, inheritance, proceeds of deceased estate held by their personal representative. So those are all the temporary high balances that they are willing to pay over and above the 85000 So that should put your mind at rest. Yes, you'll be inconvenienced for a while, but apparently it says 20 days. That's fantastic. That's fantastic if it only takes 20 days. I mean, all I'm trying to think is that if this is the case, just don't sweat. It's, it's just one thing less to worry about. You don't have to fill up any forms. You don't have to write them. You don't have to call them. You don't have to email them. But I am going to give you their number just in case it needs to put you at rest if the worst happens. But at least it means you don't have to worry. It's like, OK, you're going to be inconvenienced. And yes, when we save a bit of money, that's like our security. It makes us feel um a bit more in control of our circumstances. And when that money is wiped out and all the banks shut down and you're like, bloody hell, what's, where's my money gone? At least you can know it's rel it's safe. Unless the whole world collapses, of course. And then if the whole world collapses and we collapse in it, what good is money anyway? But all things being equal, you get your money back. You get it back automatically. You don't even have to make a call. Okay. You will need proof that you have held a temporary high balance. So it's no point if you've got, like, say, um, 150,000 in your bank account. It's no point saying to them, oh, yeah, but that 50 grand was from a temporary balance, you know, it's from an insurance pay payment. You have to have proof that anything over 85,000 is, you know, if you want it refunded, that is, that you've got it through one of those methods I mentioned before. So um, the kind of receipts you need for a temporary high balance, property of sale receipt, land register, um, HMRC records, court judgment, court orders, a will, probate letters of administration, Letter from an insurer of the payout, letter from lawyers, conveyances, mortgage fee providers, former employers, pension trustees, uh, social security statements, and death or marriage certificate, depending on what it is you are claiming the temporary, you're seeking reimbursement under these rules. So this is not an exhaustive list, it depends on life events that have brought about the temporary high balance. And the good thing is, is that when everything goes tits up, if everything goes tits up, you don't have to do anything. Financial Services Compensation Scheme will compensate you automatically, like I said before. If you feel more comfortable contacting them, their email address is I for India, C for Costco, T for Tango, at... F for Freddy, S for Sugar, C for 
Costco. I'll say Costco because I can't do the C. S for sugar. So F, F for Freddy, S for sugar, C for Costco, S for sugar, dot org, dot UK, O-R-G dot UK. Telephone number 0800 678 1100 or 0207 741 4100. And you'll notice that those two numbers are free numbers. So you don't have to be stressed and then having to call a premium number. So that is good. Um, they also cover um, compensation with debt management, mortgage endowment companies if they failed after the 1st of April 2019. Um, that compensation is up to 85000 as well. Insurance funds who have failed after the 3rd of July 2015, you are 100% protected. Um, also, just as an extra, you know in your bank statement, I don't know if you've noticed that IBAN and that long number, you know, underneath your account number and then you have your sort code. And sometimes it says IBAN number and SWIFT BIC number. The IBAN number stands for the International Bank Account Number and BIC stands for Bank Identification Code. I have mine, if you've noticed, in the description below. But what I didn't know is that by using them, that reference, if you're receiving money internationally, you don't, it reduces your charges. I didn't know yet. Any fees you have to pay is reduced if you um, reference those two, um, if you put down those two references. So that's interesting to know because sometimes those fees can be expensive. So if you can have them reduced, that's good. Um, and it says you could reduce charges when receiving international payments in euros. Now, I don't know if it's only euros you get a reduced fee in. So this may or may not be useful information. I do hope it is because I thought it was useful because, you know, I keep hearing about, oh, yeah, you're insured to 85,000. And I'm thinking, oh, do so you have to fill up a form? Is it like applying for universal credit? You know, you just don't know. So I just hope you found it useful. And that's all for now. Bye bye.